Recall that the independent samples t-test is useful for comparing two means. If you want to compare three or more means, then you need to use an analysis of variance procedure. In this example, we consider a study conducted about the treatment of post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. The four treatment groups were a stress inoculation therapy, a prolonged exposure therapy, a supportive counseling therapy, and a waiting list therapy, which is basically a control group. The table shown to the right shows the level of symptoms experienced by the subjects. This includes both the number of types of symptoms and how often they experience those symptoms. We're going to perform a one-way analysis of variance to determine whether there is a statistically significant difference in the level of symptoms between the four different treatment groups. The first step is to set up the hypotheses. The null hypothesis is that the means for all four groups are equal. In other words, that all four treatments are equally effective. The alternative hypothesis is that at least one of the means is different, that at least one of the treatments differs in effectiveness from the others. The second step is to compute the test statistic. To do this, we open the data set PTSD in StatCrunch. You'll notice that we have the four different treatments in the first four columns, and then all of the data combined into a single column as a fifth column. This fifth column is placed there so that we can compute the grand mean, which is the mean of all the observations combined. We can now compute a numerical summary by going to stat, summary stat, columns. Hold down the control button on the keyboard and select all five columns. And then come down and select the statistics that we want to compute. Again, we need to hold down the control button. I will select the sample size in, the sample mean, and the sample standard deviation. Press compute and now I have a numerical summary. Before we actually compute the test statistic, we do need some new notation. The first is the capital letter K, which represents the number of samples. For this data set, K is equal to four, since we have four different treatments. We also use the capital letter N to represent the total number of observations. To find this, you would add up all the sample sizes of 14, 10, 11, and 10 to obtain 45. And we also need what is called the grand mean, or the mean of all of the observations combined. In this problem, this is 15.6222. And now we're in a position to compute the treatment sum of squares. And we have a formula for it off to the left. The treatment sum of squares is given by the first sample size times the first sample mean minus the grand mean squared plus the second sample size times the second sample mean minus the grand mean squared plus the third sample size times the third sample mean minus the grand mean squared plus the fourth sample size times the fourth sample mean minus the grand mean squared. We can then use the values from our numerical summary and place them into this formula. Our first sample size is 14. And we multiply this by the first sample mean of 11.0714 minus the grand mean of 15.6222 squared plus the second sample size of 10 times the second sample mean of 15.4 minus the grand mean of 15.6222 squared plus the third sample size of 11 times the third sample mean of 18.0909 minus the grand mean of 15.6222 squared plus the fourth sample size of 10 times the fourth sample mean of 19.5 minus the grand mean of 15.6222 squared 
after we perform this calculator evaluation, we obtain 507.8431. So this is the value of the treatment sum of squares. We can then compute the error sum of squares. The formula for this is the first sample size minus 1 times the first standard deviation squared plus the second sample size minus 1 times the second standard deviation squared plus the third sample size minus 1 times the third standard deviation squared plus the fourth sample size minus 1 times the fourth standard deviation squared. And then we can refer back to our numerical summary and put in the necessary numbers. Our first sample size is 14 minus 1 gives us 13 times the first standard deviation of 3.9509 squared plus the second sample size minus 1 so 10 minus 1 or 9 times the second standard deviation squared 11.1175 squared plus the third sample size minus 1, so 11 minus 1, or 10, times the third standard deviation of 7.1337 squared, plus the fourth sample size minus 1, so 10 minus 1, or 9, times the fourth standard deviation of 7.1063 squared. And we can evaluate this on a calculator to obtain 2278.7062. So this is the value of the error sum of squares. The treatment sum of squares, the first number we computed, measures the differences between the sample means to see how different the samples are. The error sum of squares looks at the variation within each sample. So how much variation do you have within each sample? And the overall logic of this test is to compare these two after some rescaling, of course. So our next step then is to complete the ANOVA table. We can enter the treatment sum of squares into the ANOVA table. So 507.8431. We can also enter in the error sum of squares of 2278.7062. We can add those together to obtain a total sum of squares of 2786.5493. To find the degrees of freedom for the treatments, we take the number of samples K and subtract 1. 4 minus 1, it gives us 3. To find the degrees of freedom for the error, we take capital N minus K, 45 minus 4 gives us 41. We can add these two together to get the total degrees of freedom of 44. To find the mean square for the treatments, we take the sum of squares for the treatments of 507.8431 and divide by 3 to obtain 169.2810. To obtain the mean square for the error, we take the sum of squares of 2278.7062, divide by the degrees of freedom of 41 to obtain 55.5782. And finally, to compute the value of the test statistic, we take the treatment mean square of 169.281, and we divide by the error mean square of 55. 0.5782 to obtain 3.0458 and then this is the value of our test statistic. The third step is to compute the p-value. The test statistic used in the analysis of variance has an F distribution. The F distribution is a family of curves which depends on two parameters called the numerator degrees of freedom and the denominator degrees of freedom. To find the numerator degrees of freedom, we use the formula capital K minus 1, where capital K is the number of samples. In our example, we had four samples, so we will have 4 minus 1 equal to 3 numerator degrees of freedom. To find the denominator degrees of freedom, we use the formula capital N minus capital K, where capital N is the total number of observations and capital K is the number of samples. In our example, capital N is 45, 
and k is 4 leading to 41 denominator degrees of freedom. We can then sketch an f distribution which starts at 0 and is strongly skewed to the right. The p-value will be the area of the right tail, the area to the right of the test statistic of 3.0458. To compute the p-value we can open up the calculator in StatCrunch, go to Stat, Calculators, F. Enter the numerator degrees of freedom as 3, the denominator degrees of freedom is 41. Select the greater than or equal to direction to find the area of the right tail. Enter the test statistic of 3.0458 and press compute to find a p-value of 0 0.0393. The fourth step is to interpret the results. The p-value is smaller than 0.05 and this is regarded as moderate evidence against the null hypothesis. Hence the difference in anxiety levels of the four different treatment groups is statistically significant. The differences in this case are also important from a practical perspective. We can see this by comparing the sample means. The least anxious group had an anxiety level of 11 and the most anxious group had an anxiety score of 18 meaning that they suffered from nearly twice as many anxiety symptoms. So clearly one of the treatments is much more effective at treating post-traumatic stress disorder.